Welcome to Isn't It Obvious, where things are obvious. <laughs> That's going to be the intro. <laughs> That's going to be the intro forever now. Right. Okay, so welcome to Isn't It Obvious, where... Ah, oh, crap, I screwed it up. All right. Um, you, you fucked up our cold open. We have a cold open. Impressive. We don't even do cold opens anymore, do we? God, we should. It is nice to have that standard opening, but... Eh. Oh, the random bullshit we've just had is pretty great. I mean, it's we'll all shit because it's me talking, but... It's still pretty great. It adds I the enjoy it. <laughs> I don't think it's cringy. I just enjoy the rapport that we have. The warmth of... Okay, let's move on. I was like, you're um, so good. And then I'm like, no. <laughs> well, uh, no, thanks for listening. And we have, today's... Some Minnesota's cold, Phil. Topic <laughs> is... Isn't it obvious that entertainment economics is deflationary? entertainment economics is deflationary and i will give you an example about what the hell i'm talking about i just saw a reddit thread article for a we for one dollar one dollar on ebay a we let me repeat that for one dollar and you immediately bought it i did not buy because i already had one that i spent over 200 dollars to get the one in 2000 and whatever dollars that I purchased it in. Hey, that's um, worth a grand total of like $206 today. So, maybe. No. <laughs> it's not though. Sorry, it's worth $14,000 today? It's worth a lot more if you spend $200 back in 2005 or whatever Sorry. it is uh, compared to today. The dollar value of yesteryear. Which is always hilarious that like the old timers don't get it. Like, oh, when I was your age, I only made three dollars an hour. Like, yeah, but how much did we, we don't need cost? a fifteen dollar minimum wage? Back in my day, I made six dollars, and I bought my first car for fourteen hundred. Yeah. Back in my day, gas was a dollar sixty. I had this conversation all so two thousand and five. No, that I think oh, that, no. Was, that was nineties, pretty sure. It, I was shocked when it went above like a buck ten in my podunk town. I, I remember out. sitting in my mother's car and we were filling up with gas. Gas, and she was complaining about a dollar sixty, which is why I said a dollar sixty. Now I think about that memory, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, we were never fucked as bad as the coast. We never had like five dollars a gallon in Minnesota. Even that's at the worst. true. That's true. I think we had like three fifty or something. That was gross. <laughs> we did get up to four. Things that automatically date to movies are um, gas prices and cell phones. Like I mentioned yeah. this before, but like watching um, the movies, Jim Carrey, mm, the watching the the Jim Carrey movie, uh, me myself and Irene, like there was a scene of the gas station, and it was like uh, less than a dollar or something like that for a gallon, and you're like, oh, that just totally removes you from the movie because <laughs> you're not thinking like, holy crap, gas is really affordable in this movie in this whole you're like, Jim oh, Carrey this is universe. Yeah, yeah, playing GTA no. San Andreas. <laughs> coming across a gas station and it's like a buck 12 and then a person in the car is complaining that gas is a buck 12 for a game that was released in 2005 i remember a movie that did it right was the will smith movie uh i am legend where he's pumping gas using a manual pump and then the gas is like five dollars a gallon in new york during that time and you're like oh they future thought this you know, and that also the called out the batman versus superman movie eight years before that was made i'm glad that they did not go with the extended cut where the director wanted to say that will smith was the bad guy and i'm like come on like this this is not that type of movie. Okay, moving on. No, because that's the, the pro- story. Okay, I, the story uh, is he was the bad guy. Okay, He was inhibiting yeah, but, the evolution of a new species. Okay, spoilers alert. Yes, but also, yes. The issue I have with inflation, uh, trying to talk to my parents' generation of this, is they would have stacks of magazines where it's from, uh, like, Time or something like this. And then I would, like, kind of like, uh, leaf through it. And then I'm like, oh, wow, um, a Ford Mustang was... $5,000 in oh, 1970. God. And they're like, oh, yeah. But minimum wage was like a buck twelve. Right. And they're like, oh, that was very expensive back then, Phil. And I was like, like, how much did houses cost? And they're like, oh, yeah, you know. It was so very cheap. It was like, like 50 grand. They're like, um, you know, the first house we kind of got was like 30 or 50 grand or something. Good. But you have to keep in mind that it was very hard to get. And I was like, well, how much did wages catch up? How much were wages back then? And they're like, oh, you didn't really make that much. And I was like, but I find it hilarious that if, like I would show them like a graph that says our real wage hasn't increased since Reagan. And they're like, oh, that's not true. You guys just have it easy. And I'm like, okay, so you understand some concepts of inflation, but not like the bigger. Pi- okay, Only I'm the ones it. that like, affected you. So personally. how is this? Uh, intertwine with entertainment economy is 
Def depreciated. De def deflationary. Deflationary. Sorry. <laughs> Defe Whatever. Defen defenestration. Sorry. Defenestration. Something about. I can't read my handwriting. Sorry. Something about small. Anyway, what? <laughs> God damn it, guys. <laughs> Entertainment economics is deflationary, as in, unlike things that cost more over time, entertainment is actually costing less over time, especially if you're patient. The whole That's story true. about no, like that... um. No, it's true. Like most flat screen televisions. Like Sorry. let's 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 be honest. Like podcasts free. Um, most shows. Not free. I mean, you could be a Patreon. Supporter. You could be. You could Thanks, be. Mom. But a lot of them. Well, if, if there isn't the funny, are like free a, to listen, right? To an extent, but you're never getting the improvement of quality unless it's on the producers, well, the that's content true. creators. There, end. there are there are producers who like are you know paid professionals who get ad revenue. Well, it's the same thing as like but Twitch the streamers. consumer. But for the consumer side, it can be still free. You don't have to pay to be entertained. You could pay if you want to get like the Patreon special package or whatever for extra stuff. But the content creator will put out a lot of free stuff as well to entice more listeners, entice more viewers. And a lot of the fans who support them are doing it on their own volition because but, they're very generous, right? Isn't that really a better business model? I would agree, but... Oh, to be frank, most people, most of those viewers are going to be freeloaders. Well, I mean, just to plug in, don't forget to go to iiopodcast.fm. Again, iiopodcast.fm. Thank you. And we will be right back right after these words from our sponsors at iHeartRadio. Oh, my God. <laughs> We you guys it. like to listen to music? <laughs> well, go to iHeartRadio.com and you can listen to lots of music. <laughs> hey, I you Radio. listener, Dot you're com. already listening. How about you listen to more iHeartRadio podcasts? I didn't podcast. realize. I didn't realize we were selling out at this point. But all right. <laughs> Okay. Wait, I, already, I already sold my 25%. Viacom owns it. Anyway. Um, by the way, it's amazing official... how much you get for 25%. By the way, I heard really is probably not sponsoring this episode. We are definitely not going to sponsored have to edit by... that out. Yeah, that's no, probably honesty. true. <laughs> yes. Uh, we're not big enough. We're not big enough potatoes. Well, okay. all right. So should we go back to, uh, should we just have like MySpace as generic, generic corporate advertising? No, because, because who's going to give a shit about MySpace? Pets.com. That's absolutely here. defunct. We can use that. How about Mirror Magazine instead of Facebook? <laughs> or Your Place instead of MySpace? <laughs> Okay. I don't know. Whatever. Are you working for Rockstar? Because I'm pretty sure those are the websites they use in GTA 5. No. Moving. I'm legitimate. Uh, I think it is. Great. Your place. <laughs> is it? I think it is. Or your place. The, or their your social place? media thing is, yeah. I don't know. Great minds. Anyway. Indeed. FYI, this podcast is not sponsored by. Anyway. This tangent <laughs> was brought to you by Amtrak because that so really anyway, switched hard. Entertainment <laughs> depreciates. Yes, I, I think so. Because everything is free with, like, ad revenue, basically. It's if not everything. free, it's extremely affordable today. Yeah. Whereas, like, I used to think that the metric for entertainment hours were watching a movie at a theater. If I can get, you know, 90 minutes of entertainment for... Okay, I have, to disagree. Entertainment, though. I have to disagree about the theater experience and a sports event because those ticket prices can be can be not always but can be very excessive very right expensive. but one of those is a unique experience only for the first weekend and one of those is unique experience every and, time and so like phil's premise of if you're patient then it's yes the 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 value has just depreciated it is deflated it is tanked because if you can wait like a month you can find that video somewhere sure, instead of sure. going to but the theater that, and, and enjoying it legally. But that doesn't take into account the glory of the hot take. The Me hot seeing take. episode seven and being like, oh, that part at the end where Hans and then pausing is a bit of a power trip if you know someone hasn't seen it. Mm. Because only, you can then the spoil that, that and that adds into the investment of the time and the money. Only for the people no, <laughs> only for the people who enjoyed taking that power trip and You're for the people who died. those people know will be upset oh, about it. Yeah, because if you were to take that hot take with me, I would just be like, okay, and then we'd move on. <laughs> Yeah, and did okay. you hear that the, the Tottenham Hotspurs lost 7-0 to in a game against Man U? I didn't, and okay. That's your football team, isn't it? It's one of the football teams you I sometimes not. call. What? You are it's... not a football fan. No, I'm really not. Shame. I Shame have... in a pox Dude, upon your house. 
Listen, football I haven't watched I haven't watched a sport for like a year and a half now. <laughs> So, That's because a real sport hasn't happened in a year and a half. Exactly. So I have no idea what's going on with any of my sport teams. I would argue that, oh, that was awkward. Okay, we, go ahead. We Sorry, both Mike. paused and I put up my hand to let you go. And it was like, oh, yeah, it's Yeah, we can't camera. see your hand. Your hand is way over there. Anyway. All right. I will, I will argue that um, I think that if you want the genuine experience of watching it live, then perhaps I'm wrong here because it is really expensive to go to a Vikings game. The tickets are not cheap, and the whole like, experience I would rather just could probably set home. you back easily five hundred dollars. Yeah, I would rather just stay at home. Correct, and watch it but on TV there is for an free. absolute argument to be made that live sports is better than sitting on your couch because it's no. the shared experience with a community. It is the same reason people go to church, same reason why people go to concerts, same reason why people do anything communal. It is a shared experience that you can look at at an interception and go, oh, and then look and see and another dude the... catch your eye and be like, you, you know exactly what I'm and experiencing right now. Who and that fall shared for connection that... no. instantaneously. The people who fall for that bullshit are it's the type of people bullshit, that's human who... nature. Yep, are the people who go to church and who go to sports <laughs> and enjoy their bullshit. The rest well, I... of us stay home on our couch and enjoy the comfort the of our own home economics. and our underwear and drink and maybe invite our friends over to get that shared but communal that's a experience. shared communal experience anyway yes. whether you're at we, the game but or not that's the thing is it's at it's not at the game it's in but the it's, comfort of your own home in your fucking underwear experience with of a live event food that, that you are dealing with that, commercials over so instead of paying five hundred dollars you you can pay like, like your utility seats. bill your utility bill and um invite your friends over and you buy like a, a six or twelve pack and food. so your one friend who doesn't drink is coming over i have Six like, or twelve pack. Come on. Well, they, I assume would also bring beer. <laughs> oh, that that is a too hey, great of an assumption. Hey, if I'm if I'm providing the food, I will provide some of the beer. But if no, no one else is... is bringing beer, they can drink water. No, There's but... a fucking sink and a glass right do, over there. Do you now see why I brought a twelve pack to every game night? Yeah. Yes, because you're I a would good offer person. beer, and then people would be like, oh. And then the next time, people are like, hey, I brought my own guys. And everyone's like, yay. And I'm like, oh, thank God Mike is here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing, too, is that I suppose it depends on how you twist uh, entertainment economics. Like, if you're talking about live events, I had a, my mentor back in my old life. He would host, like, these Viking versus Packers games, and he would invite a bunch of people over. But he would have the start time about an hour after the game started. Because people would come in and he would just get all the commercials out. <laughs> mm. And then we would just watch it. Uh, so he, he he already started recording and he would just zoom it. And then you would skip kind of like the halftime almost. And then like the game resumes and now you're watching the commercials. Mm -hmm. But you would also have like, you know, he's on the grill and all this other stuff to eat food. And like his television was very large at the time. I think it was like 70 inches or something. Back in the day, uh, in the 90s, that would be very expensive to have that type of setup. <laughs> now it's... Still kind of like it's pricey, but not in like the tens of thousands of dollars as it would have been back then. Can you imagine a cathode ray tube or a projector TV? Like those Mitsubishis with wheels that you have to like... Yeah, the, huge, where it's just a projector thing. on a screen in a big box. Those things don't exist anymore. And the Vizio televisions that you can get at Walmart are pretty damn good for what they're worth. Oh, hell, it's 65 inches, only $500 now. And so like, I, I feel like you could probably be smart about how you consume this entertainment to make it more deflationary. The only thing that I think it's really hard to do are concerts. Because again, I think you can only see your favorite band live. You can't exactly watch it on like a YouTube You thing. can watch live if the audio track is done well, because that gives you a similar experience. But if your desire is to watch your band play live, then you don't like live shows anyway, because it's being in the crowd and being suffused in all of that noise that yeah. is part of the show. I would it's agree part of that the if energy. you're going to go to a concert, you're there for the experience because otherwise if you just enjoy the music you can just buy their album and well there's albums a uniqueness are... to live shows though that's true that is true so you might see or get like some riff or some like extra bit that you wouldn't necessarily mm -hmm. get on the track but well, it's like uh no effects a punk band tours still tour now i think um, see the link in the show notes <laughs> <laughs> it's no effects you've heard of them you know them if you haven't it doesn't matter you wouldn't like them but they had they put out an album that was meant to be their new album. It ended up 
racking in a total runtime of 20 minutes. So they just made it a song and sent it out. Wow. And that is usually their uh, encore song. So they'll play their mm. normal 60-minute uh, set, do the whole, hey, we'll see you next time, guys, bye, and then walk off, do another line of blow or whatever gives them energy at 50, and then come back on stage and do this 20-minute song. Every time they play in Minnesota, they play that at the beginning of their set because oh. they have a song specifically about Minnesota that is part of their encore. I don't, okay, uh... all right, I don't I don't mean to um, segue this, but can I just say, isn't it obvious encores are kind of stupid? Well, like, a lot of the bands, idea that that's a lot of bands ex- that's play expected. into, of like the, hey, we'll see you next time, guys, wink, wink, nod, nod, everybody stay where you are, we just need to, like, go change our shirts because yeah, but we've been playing for dumb? an hour. Could, could they just, I don't know, all right, it, okay, it's, fair, it's, if they need to take a minute. It's performative, and it's part of the script. <sighs> well, I can tell you, as a, as a young child who had gone to her first concert as a as a young child Metallica, um, she did bold. no she some of it down but she was um not expecting this encore and she was fucking tired at i don't know <laughs> like I don't know, 10 11 i don't know i was a child PM. and it was no it was like 10 or 11 and i'm like okay show us over let's go and they're like no there's an encore i'm like what <laughs> Fuck. See, I, there, there is <laughs> I was that. so mad. You, you have that situation. You have the people that nod, nod, wink, wink. But then you have actual artists that my friend will talk about this show where she went to this band, Nickel Creek. I suggested to everyone. There, it's three phenomenal uh, musicians that play folk art. It's low-key. It's very nice. Show notes. Show and notes. the mandolin player is great. Anyway, anyway, they went to a show and they had the performative encore and then the encore went on for like another hour then they announced oh. like hey we're just we're having a lot of fun just playing so uh we have to close down because the bar has to close and do stuff but we're just gonna like go up to the front and keep playing if you guys want to keep hanging out and like that's an amazing encore yeah that would be great to experience i think that the other problem with encore is if you go to a comedy show, it's like you know that they're gonna come back out. Do comedy yeah. shows have encores? They do. Some of what? Them do. Why? Yeah. I assume. I, that's what I'm saying. It's like why? Would, would they, yeah, no. Why it's like you, you made your set. It's done. The only yeah. thing you're gonna come out with is like old stuff. Woo! Right. Hey, wow, guys, thanks for hanging around. Hold on, you or might be a redneck. Your <laughs> yeah, it's like why? Why? And then I remember I went to um, a Distance World concert, like the music of Final Fantasy, and. Not the type of people, not black mages, but black mages are great. And it was a full pit orchestra, and at the way end, they played uh, Final Fantasy VII's One Wing Angel. So, like, they had a choir show up from this local university. <laughs> yep. And then that was it. That was their finale song. And then I don't think the orchestra, like, the people who organized this realizes how, like, nerdy the group was. <laughs> because people dressed up nice to go to this, like, sit-down orchestra thing. Mm-hmm. And then they're, like, yelling and shouting encore. Right? Like, hey, what's, we want another song. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. You and I both know that you have another Inya. And they're, like, so confused. They're, like, they're we're like, old that's and one we're... thing of its origin is, like, it was <laughs> the crowd goading the band to play something else. Well, that that's a real encore. Like, that's but a, that that's doesn't a legitimate happen anymore. Genuine... Because just assumed that there's an encore. Well, so even that this... bit of the performative nature of this, except when it's away. not assumed in this. Right. Yeah, this one there wasn't any. The guy had to, like. We're like, uh, dude, it's like fucking. I'm tired. It's we, eight we played o'clock our set. And we are We're professionals done. wearing suits. We are yeah. professionals wearing suits. We have instruments that are like are heavy. I like, have a this Stradivari is a... Yashi. It's very close to a Stradivarius. The. Uh... <laughs> The the uh, the composer of that song came out and so just said thank you. Like, the lights were off and there? everything. Yeah. What? Um, and that's yeah that that was the encore because he doesn't speak English. Right. And he was he happened to be in that show I guess but like and he said oh you know he's like appreciate thank you. the sentence and then he walks out because that's all he can do and and then we're like oh we really thought there was going to be another song like they didn't play <laughs> no one Final told Fantasy this person how, how theme, concerts which, work in America <laughs> right and I was like oh that was a letdown but okay like I guess <laughs> like that was a time where it's like oh yeah you know. But that song, in right? itself is a great encore experience that you get to share. It was, it was. Yeah. It, I, that's that's the novelty yeah, of great. the live show lives on because they are indeed novelties. They are. And those tickets were very, like, they only raised, like, those type of event tickets are actually a lot more expensive than they were back then. That was, what, like a buck twenty? Um, I think it was, like, 40 bucks a person to go at that time, which now I think is a lot more. Yeah, so I mean, like, trying to find Broadway shows that are traveling in this part oh, of the country. 
fucking ridiculous. Yeah, it's just a huge drought. Ooh, basically. I get to be behind just... a pillar for $80. Yeah, right? yeah that's... Whoa. So I, I agree that not maybe all entertainment economics is deflationary. I think that there are going to be ones that can command premium dollars like live events. Well, there's that, but, but also Paramount still makes money on Casablanca, and Humphrey Bogart's been dead for 50 years. So it's not so much who made the art, it's who owns the rights in America. So they don't care that a uh, movie bombs because they can sell it to a network and make their money back on whatever that movie costs. I mean, this is a good thing in general, though. I mean, because they can sell it for super cheap. But then the people who made it, the people who actually made it, that the actors and the producers and the directors and all that aren't making a dime on it anymore. It's like Michael yeah, Jackson they... owning the rights to Beatles music. Yeah. It doesn't seem right. <sighs> I think that there there was a shift in the 90s that occurred with the RIAA or the Recording Industry Association of America and how they had such a tight uh, grasp of the or grapple of how the music was going to be distributed. Whereas now, since you know iTunes really busted that up, or if you look at the stats on YouTube, for example, listening to music or music videos is the biggest slice of that pie chart by far. Like you think that um, YouTube is used for people who want to look at influencers or things that you might be interested in. No, uh, I just want to watch Skillet's best song. But I don't no, really. It's it's jam music and you don't have a, you don't have their CD, but you just discovered them randomly because someone sent you a link to their YouTube video and you're like, ah, this is a really cool artist. And then you listen to their entire album on YouTube while you're yep. working. Yeah. It, music by far outweighs uh, the, the, the content on at least that for like on at least that platform and it's basically free mm -hmm. i mean you're not going to get the high fidelity but i think most people's ears are probably ruined by now if you're our age so it doesn't really matter sorry what was that phil um, <laughs> i said that most people okay i would still argue that i'm a very boring person so i don't typically like to go to live events anyway so when i made this statement I, uh, when you mentioned, oh, what about live events, like going to a soccer game or something? I'm like, oh yeah, shoot. I didn't really think of this through. Those things are only going to go up in price. So if you're a person who likes to spend that type of money, um, yeah, I, I think that the economics of entertainment are only going to skyrocket. But if you're just a, a bloke that likes to watch movies and TVs, even reading books is super affordable with all the you know, different uh, ways you could get that, like literature or media, Does that same libraries, for example go beyond other media much like books so you buy a book the week it was released read it enjoy it you don't have anyone to talk to about it so you loan that book out so person two didn't buy the book but reads the book and can discuss it with you wants to find someone else to discuss it with goes to person three a third person who hasn't paid for that book itself because you're using the same book oh like okay so Does that i have a really big the same way i have a really big family and this is, this is what my aunts do if someone finds a really good book they just pass it around someone will buy it and then they'll be like oh this is really good and then like after all of the aunties all like eight of them or whatever get through it and they're like oh this is your, really good and then they give it your, to all your the family council quality <sighs> Okay, this has only happened once, and for me, um, I lent one of my good good books out, right? And uh, all of my aunties read it, and I got my book back, and it was, like, destroyed, because <laughs> they don't take care of their things, and I'm Earmarked, like, Earmarked, there are notes in there. Why is half of my cover missing? <laughs> so many. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. Oh, There's dude. a picture on page 374 of a dude playing the trumpet out of his ass. All I can tell you is I've replaced that book, like, three times, because I lent it out to people, because I wanted people to read it, and I wanted to talk to them about it. So I, I ended how, up buying it three times. How many times, Sarah, have I told you Fifty Shades of Grey is not that good? What's Fifty Shades it's of Grey? It's fantastic. <laughs> Correct, Phil. <laughs> Thank you. I'm you should have bought star. three copies just for its quality. Actually, E.L. James uh, needs more money. The, the book I was referencing was Assassin's Apprentice, because that was, like, my favorite book for the longest time. See the show notes, people. Yeah, Robin Hobb. Anyway. It's not a very depressing book. Okay, It's super on. depressing. <laughs> yeah, yeah super what Robin Hobb does is really depressing. <laughs> Everyone is happy. You're like, She's oh, there. but there's so many things that it's he's so bittersweet. in this happiness, and it's sad. It's just bittersweet. There's no happiness. Oh. <laughs> night eyes. Oh, night eyes. <laughs> Shut your face. Don't talk about night eyes. <laughs> okay. The I other thing I had the right name. I, I wanted to say, too, to your point, Micah, is games that are multiplayer. Because I'm thinking, like, the whole thing that triggered this was, for me, like a weed being a dollar. But, like, I, maybe I'm wrong about this because if you want to get the latest FIFA or the latest Call of Duty or something like that, like, you kind of have to shell out the whatever the premium price it is today. Well, I mean, you can shell it 60 bucks just to play. Or you shell it mm. 
eighty bucks to play with special outfits, or you shell out a hundred bucks to play with special right. outfits and special gun skins. Not guns unlocked for you. That comes with a hundred fifty dollar mode. Right, and then you can also get season pass too. Like there's a lot season more season pass is just model. you don't buy the you lump some for DLC, and you don't buy DLCs individually. That's the season pass. Okay, I think that there's a problem here, because the way I play games, it's usually just kind of like a non-multiplayer game. Yeah, or if it is, it's a very old one. I'm, and, I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. I just want right, to play and, an RPG that I don't need to have friends voting for who can cast what spell. Mm. Also, random teammates who are just little kids who are assholes. That's mm. different. I grew up in Counter-Strike era where that's what you dealt with. I'll that's just how you find a clan you know and then you're like, Give oh my me... god, competent people. I'll just yeah. stick Nostalgia. with Minecraft and Stardew Valley. And if I want to invite people, there is like a co-op mode, but really it's just it's just me and farming or building stuff. And that's it. That's all I need. It's great. Um, I guess there's a, there's a bigger indie scene for people to be able to not play triple a games and still enjoy their time so i suppose it's just more options generally but i would say that if you fall into certain traps of the entertainment consumption cycle like you could pay premium dollar and you wouldn't have the deflationary effects that you would hope for All right, but are you at talking the about same... cyberpunk 2077 the gift that mm. keeps on giving yeah that is kind of but if you're patient i suppose and you don't fall into the traps of you needing to play the latest game. But if you can delay your instant gratification needs. But then you miss out on all of the best T-poses, and then a car do randomly you? driving into do a you? building when you're on the 37th floor. Do you miss um, out, or do you avoid it? Like a boss. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how you take T posing in what's supposed to be a triple A game that has been supposedly oh my god in production hell for ten years. Not oh, being part of the it's, it's, initial... I can't wait for the real story for Cyberpunk to come out. Uh, it's gonna be so never... fucked up. So yeah, I think if you're a patient person, that you could probably have more options to pick and choose, and you could pay a, a discounted amount for premium content. But it doesn't work for everything. It's not gonna work for live concerts or sporting events. It's not gonna work for multi player games but you're also it's not missing out on the for, zeitgeist and you're gonna miss out on the zeitgeist which drink. it's double drink because i said it too um <laughs> we don't have to we drink part of the show just, we're I'm not the drinking game is for the people <laughs> i know i was just reminding our listeners <laughs> anyway so i i but on the whole i feel like if you're patient yeah it seems like things that are wants at least in america are very affordable. Things that are needs are a totally different fucking story. Yeah. But things that are wants, <laughs> like prices have never been. Is really not affordable. Right. That, then that brings up Feeding the idea family. of like nostalgia mining that a Maybe. lot of more video games. I mean, I guess movies do it too, but movies do it in a worse way that is not what they view as nostalgia. But WoW Classic, did that need to happen? No. Because it... hundreds of thousands of people, probably millions, but I don't know, went back to play original 2003 release World of Warcraft in 2019. Yeah. After Warcraft is still making Content. patches and DLCs and uh, expansions. God, expansions. Why take me so long to get to expansions? They're still making expansions for their game. Uh, but yet okay. they brought up the classic to i don't think that was nostalgia right but that sense of nostalgia isn't a whole point deflationary. Of deflationary. Deflationary. deflationary is that deflationary to re-release the base game 15 years later and trying to tap no, into I, a new market i think that's inflationary like that's the opposite right because if you are cashing out in nostalgia and you have a bunch of new people paying premium dollar or dollars that blizzard is going to set for you and you're going to you're going to be fry and you're going to say shut up and take my money Ugh, you're paying what blizzard wants you to pay and that's not exactly good for you so they're cashing they're exchanging dollars for some strange mythical feeling of nostalgia but i have my own views on nostalgia and why vanilla wow was a thing which is people honestly think that vanilla wow was the better game and that the later patches and expansions ruined it but i also think that they're complete morons because the reason why Vanilla WoW was fun for them was because they were at a time in their life where they had less responsibilities and more free time. And now these people who, yeah, and now that they're older, they want to have a taste of that. And in my brain, it's, that is really messed up because it's it's not going to be the same experience anyway and what is the point to this you're chasing something that isn't really even there it's a phantom got to level um, 15 with the same stupid build of my hunter that i had when i was 14 i was like oh i've played this game before 
done. Right. And it's like, you should be making new memories right now. Like if you're in 2003 and you're playing Chrono Trigger for nostalgia, you're fucking it up. This is my concept of like, if you're chasing after something in the past, you're, it's, it's going to spoil both the past and the present. And that's why Chrono Cross is the best game ever. And don't at me. And it's also <laughs> one of the worst RPGs ever. Oh, jeez. This is why are... I can't watch a lot of recent videos because it's so many of it so many of them are, are remakes so many of them are like sequels or reboots but, but videos just... do you mean movies movies oh, okay. yeah sorry <laughs> movies or shows but mostly movies i just I, I don't have any interest in seeing them like i just don't care because I've, i know what the story is and like it was good back then but like i know it's not going to be the same now and it's not going to necessarily give me that same feeling i had then like i can recognize that and i don't really go for all the nostalgia like, that's not really something that hooks me. An another form of entertainment that I want to bring up that's not just consumption-based is also, I mean, you know, entertainment like alcohol or tobacco or, you know, what have you here. I, I would also like to point out that technology is, is often improved at a capitalistic rate. So even if your entertainment is like playing the guitar, for example, like you don't have to pay premium dollar to get a decent guitar. You can even get one used or secondhand that's good enough. This wasn't the case back when I was a child in the 90s, where musical instruments were fucking expensive. But thanks to capitalism and Amazon, you can get something decent enough. I disagree. Was a guitar what you wanted to learn on? Or was it a more specialty instrument? Well, for me, it was the violin. And that okay. they were really expensive when I was a kid. They specialty still instrument. Are. Yeah, they are. A specialty still instrument. Are. But you, you can don't get have a... a Gibson of violins. You don't no. have a company that mass produces them. Well, mm. you do have... You do not have to the same that, extent. Not to the same extent. But if you're patient enough, and the fact that they do mass produce musical instruments, they mass produce everything, first of all. They also, thanks to the wonderful decisions from the World Trade Organization, you can get handcrafted things that are pretty decent in quality. They're not going to be very but good. But it's from the WTO, so handcrafted isn't gigantic, bolded, italicized air quotes. Right. Um, and you can still get these type of specialty items that are fairly affordable and somewhat decent. You're not spending an arm and a leg to be even in the introductory version of this hobby or this form of a productive enter entertainment use of your time. Do you guys have instruments? Sorry. I have a piano that's worth more than my goddamn car. Um, and it was gifted because the person who um, gave it to me actually gave it to my son uh, when he was born. And... He had to leave Minnesota to go to Dallas for his job. So he wasn't going to lug this super nice piano with him. So he's like, here, um, I'll pay. Where's your address? I'll just I'll just ship it to you or you know, hire piano movers to you. And now you have it. But it's, and I can't, it's not like a gaudy baby grand. It's not it's, it's not a baby grand. It's a pretty decent Yamaha upright. The, it's, at the, money, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's, Absolutely. it's a lot of money. He was he wanted to be like a either like a chemical engineer. He ended up getting uh, a pretty nice job as a chemist somewhere postgraduate thing. And he also wanted to do like piano performance degree, but he had to choose one. So he went with the one that made him more money. And so he wanted to buy a thing that was nice and that was higher quality, but just that, like no more. So that's the one he got. The, and the I was like, plus model. the basic plus model enough for performance and not just for like a sure. learner. And I was like, well, I'm never going to fucking pay that price. If it was me, I would pay something like 200 bucks for a piece of shit because I don't want to spend anything more than that. Hundred bucks. So for a Casio. A <laughs> um yeah. Like an electric keyboard. <laughs> like a Roland or something. <laughs> Show notes, people. <laughs> so oh my thought here was that like, yeah, there there you could still get the fabled economics. There's a price point for every quality out there. Mm -hmm. There's a price point for every demand in a perfect market. So yeah, you could get pretty cheap instruments that are fairly decent compared to what they were because they're more available. And I consider them to be okay. Like I'm sure that if you're a master at this instrument, like the violin, you consider it to be atrocious. But if hey, you're a master you know, at the violin, you should make anything sound like amazing. Wow. That's that also true. But I do believe that for most most forms of entertainment that provide like some value of someone worthy, someone willing to give their hard earned money to, it's already been commodified to a point where it's easy to uh, enter that market to well, um, it's also based on scale. You have local theater that is not professionally trained, that has not had years of touring experience that perform in any local city. So you have uh, that level of entertainment that is kept within your community that can be enjoyed, but the quality is going to be much lower. 
Hmm. I think that's a good point where there's like a almost like a curve where what you're willing to pay for for the least amount of like least amount of money for the maximum amount of quality that you're willing to like exchange dollars. Yeah. Going and, to a Twins uh, game is different than going to a Saints game, right. but they're both entertaining. If you're patient enough or you're um I guess aware enough, I think you could get a lot of good high at least medium quality of entertainment for and you could stretch your dollar at the same time. If you're going to be blind enough on autopilot i could see how you could spend tons of money on this oh yeah uh, seeing a wicked play in the twin cities for 200 dollars for a ticket we could see yeah. it on broadway for 80 the same quality it's just not the touring just watch group the, or just watch the video production of it just of watch the, the wizard of oz and imagine what a musical would be and it's better than wicked <laughs> I still haven't seen Hamilton, and I'm, I think I that's... I haven't either. Here's the um, thing. In the Heights has already been made to a movie. Uh, he's sold out. Don't watch any more of his musicals. You've already missed that train. I don't it's really beyond care. the zeitgeist at this point. Drink. Drink. And... <laughs> So anyway, that's my, isn't it obvious that, um, you know, the things that we need are fucking expensive here in the States, but things that we want are really, really affordable. Welcome to this country. I bread hope you circuses. enjoy your stay. Yeah, bread and circuses. Well, Thanks, Best scent of my deal. Thanks, Mom. Yeah.